The issue of heat shields falling off Starship rockets has been a painful problem for SpaceX for a long time. Although the company has spent a lot of time, money, and effort to research and handle this problem, the situation continues to recur. And it looks like it reached the tipping point in the event of November 18, given that many tiles were missing or damaged, raising massive concerns about the rocket's ability to withstand the extreme temperatures of atmospheric re-entry, especially within the context after IFT-2. Starship is set to join a soft landing test in IFT-3, which is related to the thermal protection system. So, how will SpaceX address this issue? What are the implications for the future of Starship? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. After Starship's historic second launch, the engine, hot staging techniques, and Stage Zero were the things that SpaceX fans were most hotly discussing. However, there is a small but equally important part that needs to be mentioned here, which is the heat shield. During the Starship's ascent, the camera captured images of several heat shield tiles falling off the vehicle. After the launch, many of them were scattered on South Padre Island. Some people felt excited as they found it on the ground and shared their happiness on YouTube. While for fans, finding the pieces of the heat shield is a blessing, this is not the case for SpaceX itself. The hexagonal black tiles attached to starships outside are called the heat shield or star brick as a part of the thermal protection system or TPS. Made of ceramic material, these tiles are designed to protect the spacecraft during atmosphere re-entry. You know, Starship is expected to back home with a speed of 5 miles per second. It means the rocket would go so fast that it would be massively compressed air ahead of itself, known as adiabatic compression. This will create a shock wave in front of the Starship rocket, which generates super hot plasma. This plasma is so hot that without any thermal protection, it could literally melt the stainless steel on the Starship's body. Thus, it's safe to say that TPS plays a crucial role in Elon Musk's plan to reuse his rocket. Imagine what if a system failure occurred during the spacecraft's re-entry into the atmosphere, such as a falling thermal tile. Remember the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster in 2003? In addition, it's not the first time these star bricks have fallen off during Starship test flights. Although the company found a way to fix it before Iftone, a similar matter still occurs. Thus, one more time put a new challenge for SpaceX. So what caused the failure on those heat shields on November 18 and how did SpaceX improve it? Perhaps they missed out on testing each tile individually with a suction cup to verify their adhesion, as they usually did in previous tests. As a part of the FAA's requirements, SpaceX has to solve the problem of heat shield by finding a more reliable way to attach the tiles to the rocket, either by using a stronger adhesive or by installing them on an elevator. And what did they do? Let's take a look at this barrel and you will see a different pattern of pins for attaching heat tiles. Of course, they still use a system of three clips for each tile, but instead of being spaced as far apart as previously, now those three clips move closer together. This hinted at the reduction of the brick size, which would significantly improve the heat shield tiles' strength, making them harder to crack. Perhaps SpaceX will apply this new design for the whole system on the vehicle, or they will use a hybrid approach, given that just installing the smaller size tiles in more challenging areas like near the flaps, while the majority of the ship's area is unchanged. Besides that, the new heat tiles might be getting a metal insert for an unknown reason. Some suppose that it looked like a secondary protective layer in addition to the star brick outside, within the context that if the heat shield falls out, at least the stainless steel skin is still protected by that metal. However, in my opinion, it doesn't make sense because Starship already has an effective linen of protection. It is a white, flexible ceramic fiber mat between the back of the tile and the stainless steel of Starship. That mat is probably something like Kyowool 3000, which can be used up to approximately 1530 degrees Celsius without fail. Even if one or more tiles fall off, that mat will still be adhered to the ship. Anyway, all are just my speculation. So far, we have not heard any official information about the upgrades on TPS. 
Hopefully, the system will be perfect during the upcoming orbital flight of Ship 28, where the rocket is expected to perform a soft landing, meaning the TPS will be fully tested. Unlike the engines or propellant tanks, there's no way to test the complete TPS on the ground. For that reason, SpaceX must test the system through test flights, and they have started doing that since the early days of Starship. Back in 2019, seven prototype tiles arranged in a hexagon shape were seen on Starhopper in the vehicle's testing. This allowed the engineer to see how the tiles would fare with engine vibrations. They seemed to work just fine as all seven were still attached after the vehicle's 150-meter hop. Parallel to Starship's flow of evolution, the number of tiles on each prototype also grew gradually. SN4 featured 22 tiles and SN5 was 17, while larger and larger tile sections were incorporated on later ships, with SN16 having 1,935. Among those tests, several tiles were cracked, shattered, or even just fell off, and as a result, SpaceX gained the necessary data to improve the system. After that, the company went as far as installing 18,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles on one side of Ship 24, the first orbital prototype taking part in the integrated flight test with Booster 7. Although there were some reports of black tiles cracking and peeling during Ship 24's testing before April 20, 2023, it did not matter since during the orbital flight. I was pleasantly surprised by the tenacity of the heat tiles during the rocket's ascent. Two years ago, NASA even planned to monitor SpaceX's Starship Starbricks heat shield during IFT-1. Specifically, NASA's scientifically calibrated in-flight imagery SCIFLI team planned to conduct a SCIFLI Starship re-entry observation. During the test, the agency would monitor the stainless steel spacecraft's heat shield as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere with an aircraft that would carry a new instrument called SCIFLI Airborne Multispectral Imager. Unfortunately so far, Neither Ship 24 nor Ship 25 could enter the re-entry phase, so NASA has not yet gotten an opportunity to conduct its plan, and we have not yet witnessed TPS perform its main role. However, with the lessons that SpaceX collected through the past test flights, then applied to their spacecraft and their thermal protection system, everything would be changed in the future integrated test flights. At that time, SpaceX's ultra-simple design could give Starship massive advantages over NASA's space shuttle or any spacecraft in both the safety and financial aspects. SpaceX is aiming to make the upper stage fully reusable, which will be a first in the aerospace world. The company already reuses the first stage boosters of its Falcon 9 rockets, but it has to manufacture a new second stage for each mission. Therefore, the second stage remains a big component of the launch costs of a Falcon mission, even if SpaceX reuses the first stage. Unlike the Falcon 9's second stage, which is not designed to transport humans, Starship's upper stage will double down as both a cargo and crew transportation, depending on the mission profile. The heat shield is crucial for Starship's survival, as it will flip itself at an angle that exposes the shield to either the Earth or Mars's atmosphere. A tiny error in this area will result in the spacecraft's disintegration during landing and threaten the lives of the crew on board should it receive a human rating. Regarding the financial aspect, ensuring TPS works effectively plays a key role in making Starship fully reusable, thus cutting down the cost per launch to the maximum level. In fact, Starship will eventually be able to deliver about 100 tons of cargo to any planet in the solar system, such as Mars, for as little as $50 million. For comparison, the partially reusable space shuttle costs $1.5 billion to lift only about one quarter of what Starship will, and only into low Earth orbit. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.